So far, I've been telling you about the theory of quantum mechanics and how it tries to answer questions about reality. Today, we're going to do something a little different and actually question quantum mechanics itself. I've been looking forward to this. In this video, we're going to look at a paradox Einstein helped create to disprove quantum mechanics. To understand it, we need to know about an essential ingredient in quantum theory, entanglement. Entanglement isn't actually something limited to quantum. Consider this example. You have two objects, one red and one white. You put them into boxes and shuffle them around. Now if you open one of the boxes and see the object is red, then you know without having to check that the other box has the white object in it. So we say that these two objects are entangled, which means that knowing something about one causes you to know something about the other, without ever having to look. However, quantum entanglement is much more interesting than this garden variety. Of course, the culprit, as it always is in quantum mechanics, is superposition. Let's go back to our example. While the boxes are closed, we don't know which state the object in each box is in, red or white. If it were truly impossible to know, which isn't actually the case in everyday life, but let's say it is this time, then quantum mechanics tells us that each object must be both red and white at the same time. But it's even weirder than that. There are two possibilities. Either A is red and B is white, or the other way around. But superposition tells us that all possible things happen at once. So the state of the two objects is both A is red, B is white, and A is white, B is red. Now this is a bizarre superposition. What happens if Alice checks object A? She collapses the state of object A, which is weird but as usual, but she also collapses the state of B, which she didn't even touch. I'm sure at this point that a lot of you are skeptical. Why should we accept the quantum picture when it's obvious that the classical version has the same results by a far less convoluted method? Couldn't it be the case that objects aren't actually in superpositions at all? This is a very good concern, and one we'll be taking seriously. We're going to try and build a test. First, let's notice something. In quantum mechanics, these particles are not independent of each other in a deep sense. You could argue that the classical particles aren't either, but here's the difference. In the classical case, measuring one of the particles, say, finding out that it's red, doesn't actually turn the other one white. In fact, it does nothing to the other one. The objects already had a colour all along. On the other hand, according to quantum mechanics, the objects have to affect each other. Otherwise, each object is in a superposition of red and white, and Alice could measure hers and find it's white, but this doesn't do anything to B's superposition, so Bob could measure B and find it's white as well. But this can never happen. The EPR paradox is a brilliant and simple argument that exploits this difference between the classical case and the quantum one. The authors wanted to show that, even though it seems like both the classical and quantum explanation can explain this experiment, the quantum one actually can't. It's a proof by contradiction, which means that you assume something, in this case that quantum mechanics is true, and then show that that would lead to something impossible happening. Therefore, the assumption must have been false all along. Actually, we don't need to assume all of quantum mechanics is true, just one little fact. We need to assume that if we have an entangled pair, A and B, then measuring A really does affect B. We saw that quantum has this quality, while classical mechanics does not. But we don't need to worry about superposition, etc. for this argument, just this one little fact alone. Okay, so now, say that our boxes get shipped to the other sides of the universe, to Alice and Bob. Alice opens hers a split second before Bob opens his. Alice finds her object is red, so Bob must find that his is white. But let's think about what must happen in that split second between when Alice unboxes her object and Bob does the same. A must tell B that it's been measured and what result it decided to be, or else B won't know what to do. But that message has to go an awful long way in a very short time. In fact, even light couldn't go that fast. This is a big problem. If you've heard of Einstein's theory of relativity, you might know that the fact that nothing can go faster than the speed of light is the foundation of that whole theory. Therefore, accepting our assumption that A and B can really influence each other is equivalent to pulling the rug from underneath relativity. 
To Einstein, this was impossible, so he concluded that the assumption must be wrong. Let's not be so certain. What are the possibilities? The first possibility is that the assumption really is wrong. Well, that definitely rules out quantum mechanics, but it's actually even stronger than that. It says that no theory where measuring one object changes the other object can ever be true. But then how can we explain that A and B always have opposite colours? We must do it the way classical mechanics did, i.e. none of the quantum weirdness, no superposition, no randomness, no uncertainty principle. So these are the two possibilities. Either we must believe that nothing can go faster than the speed of light and accept that quantum mechanics is completely false. Or we accept quantum mechanics, but we discard the theory of relativity. We can't have both.